Today, <coughs> today we ha are all here assembled in Turkey, in Istanbul, to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. And with that, also your celebration of your resurrection. Christ's resurrection <coughs> was a great message for us. <coughs> he won over the death and came out of that dead body with another body which was living body. The body was the same, but one was a dead body and another was a body which was living. <coughs> it's not only symbolic, it actually happened with him. After all, he was a divine child. He was a divine person. So actually it has happened with him. It's not just a symbolic thing that he died and he was resurrected into a another person or can say into a living person. For him, what is a death? For eternal beings there are no deaths. There is no death for person who is eternal. He may, for the time being, look as if he is dead, but he can never die. Christ was like that, a very, very special incarnation which came on this earth to be reborn out of the dead. Now we are also, when we are not yet realized souls, when we are not yet enlightened, we are also dead in the sense our awareness is very, very I should say, absolutely dull and dead. We can see flowers, we can see faces, we can see buildings, we can see cities, we can see all those things. All these things we see and we feel we are quite aware, which we are not. Actual awareness comes to us when we cross the limit of our mind. Go beyond the mind, and this was only possible because of the resurrection of Christ. He resurrected Himself because He was a Divine Person. But also, we are resurrected because we are blessed by Divinity. Now this mind of ours, which is in between, is controlled by she, Jesus Christ. He controls through your agya, both the sides. He controls your conditioning and He controls your ego and brings a balance in you. But when this agya chakra starts spindling all kinds of ideas, sometimes reacting, sometimes accepting conditioning. It is a slave, it is not a free thing, because it is working under the influence of your ego or your superego. For that is the death of our awareness, that we cannot, we cannot understand something beyond that there exists a life beyond this we cannot accept. This is, we have seen now, 
that we were all we were all in a condition that one was deadened. We were feeling bad, we were feeling anxious, we were fighting, and we were thinking that there's something wrong with our present life. There's something definitely which makes us slave, which by which we are slavish. That we realized, no doubt, and we started seeking the truth. We started seeking the truth in so many ways. I know so many were also went astray and they lost their balance and have fallen into a complete demise. But so many of you have been salvaged, have been saved by the great example of the Christ's resurrection. He had to venture, he had to do it and he worked it out. Without him, our agya would not have been that flexible. As it is, human beings in the olden times were air-conditioned very much, and when they have become modern, they are full of ego, nothing in between. With these two influences, we are imprisoned. <coughs> we are absolutely dead people. We have no sensitivity for anything. I've seen now, even today you can see what things are happening across, is people are very anxious to kill each other. Human beings want to kill human beings. Can you imagine such a stupid thing that we should kill our kith and kin? Then there are children who are killing, parents that are killing, no relationship is accepted. It's a sign of a person who, whose awareness is completely dead. In our awareness, at least, we should have feelings of compassion and love. But that one is lost, it's not there, we don't have it. The whole world is aflame when you read about all the wars that are going on, the way they are killing children, the way they are destroying human beings. It is a wrong attitude that by distraction of human beings, things will improve. It's a very, very wrong concept that by destroying them, one can achieve something. Our work in Sahaja Yoga is doing well, I must say, but it has to stop this horrible attitude of human beings to destroy. So you might ask then, what to do, Mother? What to do to stop this destruction? Answer is in the life of Christ. You resurrect people, you resurrect them, enlighten them, bring them to a state where they understand what is right and what is wrong. Let them feel, let them feel, the compassion and love that is within you. When that starts, that third force within us starts acting, our ego also comes down, our conditioning also comes down. For example, if you think we are Muslims, we have a right to kill others. If you think uh, we are Jews, we have a right to kill others. All these differentiations and this kind of discrimination that we have is so stupid because you are human beings, they are human beings. You are killing human beings. Not that they have committed any sin or they have done anything wrong, except that in their foolishness they believe that they are this and they are that. You are not, you are just human beings. In every human being, as you know very well, there is Kundalini. There's no discrimination. Everyone, whether you are a Muslim, a Jew, Hindu, Christian, Sikh, Parsi, anyone, you may call by any name. Now just look at 
how we accept a certain denomination for ourselves. You are born, say, to a Christian family or you are born to a Hindu family, immediately you start thinking that you are there to uphold all the flags of that religion in which you are born. You are born in that religion without your knowledge, without your permission, without any understanding. So how can you belong to that religion? You have got Kundalini, everybody has got Kundalini. So you can only be belong to the religion of humanity, where every human being has got Kundalini. So you are nothing but human beings. All these false ideas that we are Hindus, we are Muslims, we are Christians, is all man created. I mean, man can create anything. And human beings have no brains to understand that is all man created. For example, you see in America, they create associations and big organizations and all based on absolute falsehood, absolute wrong ideas, absolute destructiveness. But they form it, they form, they have groups, they have this, that, and they are prospering. But it has a repercussion they don't know if you start doing such false things again, human beings who are created by God and nobody can destroy them, then there are repercussions. Many, many countries who were once upon a time rulers, were known as great things, have come down. And all such countries who now think they are very rich and all that will have to come down. All of them have to come down is just an ultimate result of the stupidity to believe that you are higher than others, that you can kill others. So a non-violent method started, which is of another absurdity, I think, because then they start saving mosquitoes and also the bugs. While mosquitoes and bugs are, you must know, are the greatest blood suckers. They live only on human blood. Such things, what's the use of saving them? So human beings takes to something that is absurd, stupid, foolish. I don't know what is the reason. The way they accept things is absolutely unbelievable. I think it is a kind of a slavish mentality which doesn't give them freedom to think what is right, what is wrong. For this we have Christ. We have Christ, a person who was absolutely free, free from all kinds of prejudices, all kinds of temptations, all kinds of nonsense that human beings follow. But one may say that, Mother, after all, He was divine. He was divine and now you are made divine also. So how can we now join together to make a full effort, full effort, to tell people that, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? What is the need to do such things? On one side is, we can say, a mass destruction through stupidity. Another side is your own self-destruction. Take to drinking, take to other self-destructive things which are immoral. That's very easily available and people like it very much and they don't like when you talk that this is destructive. So either we destroy others or destroy ourselves. Christ was destroyed by others and He resurrected by Himself. So we are also in the same position now. I know many a times Sahaja Yoga was challenged, now it's much better, not so bad, was challenged and there were so many problems. 
But now it's smoothing down because that's the truth, that's the reality, that's what is divinity. So you should not be afraid. All these funny ideas about Sahaja Yoga also will die out. It's a resurrection not only of you people but also of our ideologies. Now the ideology is changed that our awareness should be enlightened. We should have light in our awareness. This has come suddenly through Sahaja Yoga to people, that if you don't have the light, how can you go further in the right path? It's not easy to describe Christ's life, how he went through that. He died so young and brutally he was killed. But still, all that, he resurrected himself. He came out of all that, came out of that ordeal. So for us also, when we have in Sahaja Yoga problems, we should know we have a power to resurrect ourselves. No one can destroy us. No one can finish us off because we have a power to resurrect ourselves. This special power that we have to resurrect you should all the time understand and feel it and meditate on that. I hear from people from every country, the government is doing like this, the government is doing like this, or they are having some trouble, they call you a sect, they call you this and that. All right, doesn't matter. Your duty is to believe that you are following the footsteps of Christ and no one can destroy it. This is the message of Christ's life, that divine life cannot be destroyed. When His body could not be destroyed, then how can you destroy the divine light in Him? So many Sajogis are here who have been since long in Sajoga, and they have had problems and they went through a lot of troubles, I agree. But all these things have subsided and now you are in a such a resurrected position that after some time you'll be amazed Sahaja Yoga will take over all over the world. All over the world people will take to Sahaja Yoga and we'll have such a lot of Sahaja Yogis all over the world that all these minority of some stupid people will disappear. For that what have you to do? Sometimes people ask me what do we have to do? You must have also read in the Bible that Christ prayed and He was praying. In the same way we can say we have to meditate. Through meditation we'll grow in our awareness, in our new personality, in our strengthened personality. Meditation is the only way we can grow and then no one can destroy you because you are all protected by the Divine Love. You don't have to worry as to who will destroy you, what will happen. Of course, in the beginning there's little agitation, people feel little bad about it, it's all right. But actually no one can destroy you. Have this faith in you. Christ had no organization, He had no Adi Shakti to support Him, in no way but only through His Divine personality he managed to get out of all the problems, of all the tortures, of all the atrocities on him. So now you have better advantage because you are enlightened. Firstly, he was a divine person and he could go through all that. You don't have to. Nobody will torture you, nobody will put you in jail, nobody will crucify you. Nobody will. That's not possible. But mentally, if you are upset, sometimes you get upset, I know. In certain countries people get upset because they think they are oppressed because they are in such a way. I assure you, no one can do that. You must know that you are all the time protected. Christ is there as your eldest brother, I always said that. But also you have your mother, and you have all the ganas and all the angels around you. When I see this, I just thought, look at this, 
in every country they have shown angels and ganas are there. Such pure forms of protection you have. So there's nothing to worry about your destruction or your impediments or whatever you may call it, a kind of a destructive forces acting on it. From the life of Christ we have to know that no one can destroy a realized soul in these modern times. As it is, they never destroy it. We had so many saints, you know, who were killed, who were tortured, but see, they still exist as poetry, as poems, also as their blessings everywhere. They are not finished, they are not dead, though it seems that they are no more, but even to take their names and to even to call them, they work out. They are there in their spirit and they help you. Assured by Christ's life, by His resurrection, we are resurrected people. Of course, our body also has changed. After resurrection you know that your chakras work out all the curing and all the blessings. Our attitude, our mental attitude also changes and also our ego subsides. Not only that, also our conditionings go out. Especially I was so happy that those people, say, who are born in a particular religion, immediately see what's wrong with that religion. As if they turn round and see the image of their society and know what's wrong with them and when they start meditating on those corrections, it works. Societies are improving. You see, so-called religious ideas are falling into their own traps and they will all fall because there's falsehood. That's not real religion. The religion is within ourselves. And this pure religion is the one which is a global religion. The solution comes like this, that supposing you have wars, wars in the name of religion, in the name of God especially, <laughs> and in the name of religion they have wars. So now, what happens? All such wars, that take place, cannot destroy reality, cannot destroy the truth. This is another message of Christ's resurrection. You cannot. You may think that today you have destroyed these people, but they are there. All the saints, all the great people who have been resurrected in life are all the time there. Their protections are there, their guidance is there. You can see them in a way that they are there. So one should have no fear. The fear of death has to go away. So many of them have said the same, that what is death after all? Death dies itself once you are resurrected. So one should not be afraid of death. Now, how many of you have been afraid of death before your resurrection, but not now? You are not bothered as to when the death comes, what happens or which way you are going to be so-called destroyed. You know you cannot be destroyed. In your heart of hearts you all know this very well, that you cannot be destroyed. The fear of our destruction goes away, no doubt. But there is one thing, is the compassion. When you see all these bad things are happening and people are being tortured, your mind is, you see, cannot take it for granted. It starts responding to that and it feels the pain of others, tremendous. But as a result of that, your willpower, your thinking on those lines, your tears even are powerful 
and they can bring solace to those people who are suffering unnecessarily. You have to experiment with it. Just having a feeling of compassion and love, things will improve. Now, as it is, we meditate, but we can meditate also with such compassion and such love that your tears can also have an effect on these people who are so cruel and stupid and killing each other. But it is important for you to know that now you are not an individual but you have become a global personality, a global personality. You are not an individual, you are a global personality and sitting down here you are working out all the global problems. You are not a small person now who is only worried about your own children, about your family, about this and that, no. This mind of yours has expanded, expanded like this that it works automatically for all the problems of the world. When I, for a woman I read newspapers, especially women seldom read newspapers, they think it's stupidity to read newspapers. But I read, I read and I read those where my attention is needed. I've seen it works, but all of you put two together, if you understand that it is your responsibility to correct all the destructive forces, to put them right. You just have to collectively meditate on the points where you find there's a big problem. Now, the problem mainly is because of religions, mainly. Now, if they can all jump into the new religion, global religion, they all are one. They cannot then fight because there's one religion, but they don't want to have one religion because they want to fight, they're fighting cocks. But if they come to search, if they become enlightened, then they will only enjoy love of each other and not killing of each other, destruction of others. And this is what we have to learn from life of Christ, who was alone, who was single, he didn't have such a collective behind it, but how powerful he was, that he fought the death and came out of it so clearly at the stage of Agha. Without him, we could not have worked out Sahaja. Kundalini would not have gone through unless and until he had sacrificed his life. And he readily sacrificed, he accepted the task of sacrificing his life and then resurrecting. He passed through that, I should say, a very constricted channel of Agya to put you people right by saying you forgive everyone. If forgiving was such a powerful thing that you can even fight your death, then why not forgive? Many people say, Mother, we can't forgive. And I've told hundred times that what are you doing if not forgiving? So the message of Christ's life is that he forgot, forgave all the people who troubled him. Even he said that, Oh God, please forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. On the cross he says those things. When he was tortured, insulted, he says what? Forgive them, have pity, have sympathy for them because they don't know what they are doing. They are killing the Son of God and what will happen to them? Where will they go? What will be their situation? This one is a big message for us, that even on the cross He said, forgive. O oh God, O oh Father, forgive. In the same way we have to also forgive people. It's very important from the life of Christ that we have to forgive. His forgiveness was of the greatest uh, importance for the world to understand you must forgive. If he learned how to forgive, you'll be amazed, half of the wars of this world will be finished. 
Now something happened thousands of years back, still people are fighting. Still they are fighting, thinking this thing happened so many years back, so they are our enemy. If we can really forgive those people what happened before <coughs> we were even born, why should we form a group of such people? Why? Because there is something called hatred in human beings. They have hatred, hatred for this, hatred for that. Even in small things they'll say, I don't like it, I like it, it's very common. Nowadays especially. <coughs> when we were young, we were not supposed to say such a thing, I don't like it, I like it, we are not supposed to say. But nowadays freedom has given them to talk like this, I don't like it, I don't like that, I don't like that, I don't like that person. Who are you? What do you think of yourself to judge other things? You don't know how to appreciate. You don't know how to enjoy and only what you go on saying, I don't like it. And supposing you like it, what will you do? Whether you like it or don't like it, it's just the same. But just to show off their ego, you say, I don't like this way, I don't like Because there's no love. If there is love, then you can enjoy everything. You will never say, I don't like it, I like it. You will definitely enjoy if you really say that I enjoy, I enjoy everything. You are closing down yourself by saying, I don't like it, I don't like it, I don't like it. As if you are a great canizer or a person, a judge to say this. It is very remarkable that in the West is even more prominent that they will say, I don't like it, I don't like it. Of course, in the East, uh, I would say in India, if somebody says like that, people will say, he's just trying to show off on the face. But showing off is not regarded as a bad uh, manners. It's not regarded as bad manners in the West. To feel shy of any, anything is regarded as bad manners. But to boast of something, nobody feels that it is a bad thing. Did Christ boast of anything? Never. He never boasted of anything. But when He saw people were selling things in the sh holy places, what did He do? He started beating them with hunters because that was wrong, absolutely wrong against the holiness of the place. But he didn't say, I don't like it, no. He just showed his complete disapproval of the whole system of selling things in the temple or in a, in a holy place. People go there to worship. They need a mind which is devoid of money orientation. There should be no money orientation when you are meditating. This is the biggest problem of today. Everything is money orientation. You like a car which is very expensive, so you want to have. By hook and crook you will get that car and sit in there. You might be a thief, but you buy an expensive car to show off. Perhaps maybe because you are a thief, that's why you want to hide your personality. So there is no truthful life. It's all just showing off and thinking no end of yourself. But that when the death will come at your doorsteps, what will you do? At that time, you will be trembling. With all your so-called achievements and so-called showing off, 
you will just tremble before death. But a Sahaja Yogi cannot, he will lie. If the death has to come, it has to come. He will not tremble that the death is something dangerous, but is a place where he can go and rest. He wouldn't mind, he wouldn't mind anything because he is above death, he is above destruction. So he wouldn't mind anything, whatever comes his way, and he will surrender to it easily. We have Kabir. Kabir has written so many poems, mostly about death. He said, when death came, I didn't say a single word, I didn't fight, but what I did, I took a sheet on top of me and went off to sleep. How sweetly he describes death sometimes, and Kabir then reminds me of Christ. How sweetly Christ also went through all these things, and when He died, the whole elements shook. He was the master of elements. They shook. There was earthquake and all kinds of things that happened. They, they felt His death, not Him. They felt that such a great divinity, which is the essence of existence, has been killed like this. They also didn't know that He is going to come back to His life. They also were not aware of it, but He did. He did came out of that deadening thing which for which everybody was so much shocked. His death itself gives us strength that we have no death, we have resurrected and resurrection is with us. But we have to establish, we have to establish our Sahaja Yoga, our meditation, that's very important. The other day I met one lady, she told me of several miracles in her life, how she was saved. She was about to die, she was... Up, she came across an accident, all kinds... but how she was saved? While her husband, he succumbed to all kinds of things. So I said, how, what do you mean, how, how it happened? He said, Mother, it's nothing but Shraddha. Shraddha is dedication. Surrendering, surrendering, because I'm surrendered. But I said, how? That I don't know. I'm just surrendered. I feel so comfortable, so lively, and so much out of fear when I know I'm surrendered, completely surrendered to my Spirit. And this is what it is we have to learn when we meditate, that we have to surrender. Muhammad Sahib has called Islam, Islam means surrender, though they don't surrender, otherwise, you see. But what, what is it that you must surrender to your global nature, to your higher nature? You must not die out, you must not fizzle out into these worldly turmoils and worldly things. It's a very strength-giving, example of Christ. And He is with us, He will always guide us, He will look after us, not only but He will also give us strength. He will destroy all those who will be against eternal life. He will destroy nonsensical things. And you are seeing now how in Kali Yuga all these institutions who talk of religion and fights are getting destroyed. Automatically, we have done nothing. On their own only, by their own doings, they are finishing. Because there's no reality, there's no spirit in it. And without the spirit, what is left is nothing but a dead body. The whole understanding should be for Sahaja Yogis that we have to be spirit oriented, not money oriented 
body oriented uh, emotion oriented but spirit oriented which is a joy giving thing and you'll be surprised with that orientation you will be the most happy most loving most beautiful person immediately people will know around that there's something about this man some spark about this lady some sort of a spark that she is or he is so much different from us it can be recognized in no time now at the time of christ very few people could recognize her because they were not enlightened because they are very much below the level of human beings i should say but you are not you are quite aware you are born in modern times and at this time when we think of christ we should know what a life it was what a grand personality it was that it subjected to this kind of a torture he could have destroyed all of them in no time he was so powerful such a powerful personality but he did not he forgave them. he gave you the message of forgiveness the greatest force that can work out now also you should surrender yourself to this idea of forgiveness and really try to forgive you'll be amazed you'll feel very much peaceful very happy and the person who has tortured you will come around what we have to do is now to transform people that's our job we have to transform them we are transformed we are at a point we can call it we are resurrected we have to resurrect the whole world that's our job so that all these fights all these quarrels all this false suit will just be finished for us christ is our leader who has done this for us he came as a ordinary human being lived like a ordinary human being with all these powers with the name he never used them to destroy in the same way we can also with love and affection we can also really come out of our death come out of our misgivings come out of our destructive nature this destructive nature is the most dangerous thing for sadhus that's the only hope we have that sadhus are resurrected only thing i know that if we have so many sadhus this world will change this world has to change but your progress should go on you should progress more and more not you should not retrace back for small things here and there don't worry you have a very great responsibility and that responsibility is to transform the human beings that's your due how many have you transformed how many have you changed it's all right for men or women you have to change people this is your job and this is the power you have got from christ that you have to change them transform them into the new world of happiness and joy which we call it as the sahaj nirmal dharma if it works out if it really works out think of the world how beautiful it will become for us is the duty of every sadhuvi to go into this kind of a new venture and try to find out how many people he can convert and how many people he can bring around i hope next time we'll have double the number of people that are here from all these eight countries who are hosting now all my love to you all great days are waiting us we have to now understand only our responsibility main thing is how many people we have converted how many people we have resurrected that is the record not what how many pujas you have attended and all that is not so important 
Pujas are just to give you strength and to give you power, but they are not your work. That's not your work. For your work you can take from pujas all the strength that you need, but if you don't use this power, then what's the use? So now I leave it to you to remember that you are resurrected and you have to resurrect others. It's a very, very important job at this time of complete turmoil and destruction. May God bless you.